All right, I'm going to start the blood typing video. If anybody wants to see how to do this, gather around over there where you can see. The only thing you need that's not in the kit is a little bit of water. <coughs> so I'm bringing a beaker of water over here. Obviously a cup of water. It, and just tap water is fine. I reap open the kit. Here's all of the contents of the kit. This is the Aldun card. That's what blood typing is going to be done on. I like this new kit because they give you two pokers, just in case you don't poke yourself right. Um, these are the spatulas to apply the blood. And I'm going to tear these apart. And set them on my clean lab bench. open my card and just to show everybody what's on the card um, careful to not touch it with something that might contaminate it but anyway I'll just point to the circles the anti A circle the anti B circle the anti D circle and then the control you'll notice that in each circle there is a drop of dried substance that dried substance they're different colors so at the at the factory I assume they know what they're dealing with so they, they know that the cards are being set up correctly. Um, in the anti-A circle, that in that dried substance there's some kind of solution with antibodies against A antigen. That's what's in that circle before we add anything else. In the anti-B circle, there are antibodies against B antigen before we add anything else to the card. There's dried antibodies against B there. And then the anti-D circle, that represents RH, also known as the rhesus factor. The reason, in case you care, is because we actually all have RH. If you're RH negative, it means that you're missing one protein subunit that's part of the RH molecule, or that should be. So if you're RH negative, you're missing the D subunit of RH, actually. But again, that's complicated, so just know that D means RH. And then the control, all that's doing is making sure that the it's very important, I don't want to minimize it, it's making sure that the test went correctly. So that's what the control circle is for. If the control circle reacts, as you'll see one of these over here do in a minute, um, if that circle reacts then something went wrong either at the factory with the card or more likely doing the test. Okay, the other things that are in the kit, alcohol for cleaning off my finger before I poke it, um, the spatulas we talked about, this little pipette is for putting one drop of water in each circle before we add the blood. Um, this little plastic cover is to put over the dried blood. Do not use this unless you've dried that blood well. Like put it on top of your fridge or put it in a in a hood or uh, someplace where you know it's going to be safe for a couple of days to make sure it's fully dry before you apply this uh, plastic to it. Um, last but not least, probably should have said this first, it comes with clear directions. Each one of these kits comes with very clear step-by-step -step directions. I recommend reading these once or twice, the fully reading these and making sure you understand them at least once or twice before you actually perform the blood typing. Um, and then a little code to tell what your blood type is on the back. Okay, I've done this so many times, I'm going to toss these over here. I think I'm all ready to go. I have a finger ready to poke. Could you grab me a paper towel? Because I don't, the, the one thing that this is missing is a cotton ball and a band aid. Oh no, but I do have a band aid nearby. Thank you, sir. Okay, so I'm ready to poke. Actually, before I even poke myself, I'm going to go ahead and apply my water. And just one drop of water in each circle, and I'm going to specifically drop that water onto that colored spot of the dried antibody solution in each one. The other thing to notice, I'm not sure you can see it well in the video, but I am not touching the card with the pipette. I'm holding the card way above, sorry, I'm holding the pipette way above the card and letting the water drop down. Not way above. The key is I'm not touching them because if you touch them you might cross contaminate and you'll get a bad test. Okay, I got my water on there. 
I'm ready to apply some blood and I'm done with the water. Finger poker, alcohol, and something else. The way the finger pokers work, twist and pull out that safety tab and now this is ready to fire. Um, in order for this to fire, here's how I recommend doing it. Push it against your finger with enough force so that that fires off. That way it's for sure close enough to your finger and you'll get a good poke and you'll start to see blood right away. I'm bleeding good. I'm going to squeeze it one more time. And then I'm going to grab these spatulas one at a time, touch it to the blood, put it down in the circle. Again, touch the spatula to the blood, put it down in the circle. Touch it to the blood, put it down in the circle. Last one, touch it to the blood, put it down in the circle. And now I'm ready to staunch the hemorrhage. I'm done with the blood coming out of my finger. And while I apply pressure to that, I can do the next step, which is you're supposed to stir each one of these for 10 seconds. Your stirring should fill the circle. One, two, and I'm looking at my watch. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10 seconds for that one. I'm done with that one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Done with that one. Two more to go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Last one is the control. Still ten seconds. Two. I might have been a little long on that, but that's okay. And then, in each of the four directions, you're supposed to tilt the card. Tilt it so that the fluid runs to the other end. So, two, <clears throat> three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Tilt it in the opposite direction. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Forward two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then back two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And now that's all set. Um, the directions are very specific, and the reason they're very specific, and you should follow them very carefully, um, in the hospital or a medical setting, they always use this specific procedure, and if they do it the same way every time, they get good, consistent results. So that's why the, the um, procedures are so very specific. This one looks to have worked pretty well. Let's go through what's going on here and why. Let me grab a pointer. This is one of my shiny ones. In the anti-A circle, where if you recall, there were antibodies against A antigens. We don't see any kind of reaction happening here. What that means for my particular red blood cells is, is that there are no a antigens present on my red blood cells. In the anti-B circle, again, we see no reaction. The anti-B circle contained antibodies against B antigens. If there were B antigens on my red blood cells, then we would have seen the clumping that is agglutination here, and we don't see that. So there's no B on my red blood cells. And then here in the anti-D circle, which if you recall is for RH, we do see a clumping up of the red blood cells there. 
kind of looks like it's turned into red cottage cheese. That reaction is called agglutination. Agglutination is the clumping of cells caused by the presence of an antibody. In this case, antibodies against RH bound to the RH glycoproteins on the surface of my red blood cells and caused my red blood cells to clump up like that. So that's positive for RH. So far what we have is, because there's no A and no B, this blood type is O, RH positive. So I am O positive blood type. Last but not at all least is the control circle. There's no reaction here and that's what we expect in the control circle. If there had been a reaction here in the control circle, I would have to throw out this card and say that the test was inconclusive. It was a bad test. And that's it. That's blood typing. Um, from here, what am I going to do with this card? Anybody? Let it dry. I'm going to let it dry. I'm in a lab, so I'm going to put it in the hood where there's a nice gentle breeze blowing by, and by tomorrow it's going to be so dry that I can apply the, the um, plastic to it if I want to. Ooh, something I forgot to start out with. If you wanted the information filled in on your Eldon card here, um, I recommend using a ballpoint pen, by the way, because of the type of surface that this is. Um, but you should have filled that out before you do the test. I should probably put that at the beginning of the video. But the directions are also very clear on that too. Fill that out first and then go forward with the test. And that's blood typing. As always, please feel free to leave me any comments, suggestions, questions. Here's a quick close-up of the card. Make sure it shows up good. Ooh, pretty card. Thanks for watching.